G'day, welcome back to part eight. Well, that's part nine, see. Welcome back to part eight of my milling machine build. If you missed part seven, there's a link up there now. I'd like to welcome all my new subscribers and I hope you enjoy the content on the channel. Uh, if you think that we're ready to start throwing chips everywhere after the last episode, then we're not. We've still got a few things to do. And I'd really like to finish the thing properly before I start making things. There is something I need to make pretty urgently in it, and that's a fly cutter, so I can skim the top off the table on the on the cross slide. So we'll get on with uh, all the little bits and pieces we need to fix, and uh, then we'll throw some chips around. Alrighty. So uh, first cab off the rank of things to do is I want to make a cover for the top. It'll come all the way down to here. Cover all this up. I was hoping to make it swing around, but I don't know that I'll be able to make it swing past the end here. Might have to hinge it somehow or make it lift off or whatever. And then, after we've done that, we need to come down here. Now, I've not done anything with the end of this. And I left that shaft sticking out so that I could uh, make a power feed for it. And that's what I intend to do. I'll get down to the local wrecking yards and see if I can pick up a windscreen wiper motor and uh, make a power feed for the, for the cross slide. So that's another thing needs doing. I've ordered some covers for in here. Uh, maybe they'll be here next week, don't I? We'll see. Another thing I need to do is I still need to make my chromer ring for down here for the Z axis. So uh, that's something I want to cast though and there are one or two other little things I want to cast so I'll, I'll make a day of that and make two or three things at once. But there's just a couple of jobs off the top of my head. Look I haven't even put the uh, in here. I've not finished putting the, the adjusting screws in on this gib yet so there's lots of little things to do and I'll try and get it all done before we start making chips. Uh, but there's one other thing Table's covered in crap uh, where I've been working on it. I think I can't really remember which one it is. I think it's that one there. It sits a little higher than everything else, or it might be that one. But anyway, uh, I need a bit of bolt of vice to it so I can make a fly cutter to cut the whole table with. But before I do that, I might get out the face mill and just mill a section in the centre so that I've got a completely flat area to bowl the vice to. So they're the things I've got to get done before we start throwing too many chips around, although you'll see a few if I do here with the face cutter. Alrighty, so I've cut that up and bent it all up, put it up over here like this. Um, I've got this stuff which comes on the edges of the bandsaw blades on the bite. I'll fit that around the edges so there's no sharp edges. Um, like I said, I originally wanted to hinge it so it would swing out from here, but oh, it ain't going to happen. So I've got a bolt tip there and a bolt tip there and one of these latches that I've, uh, well, I've got quite a few of those so I've had to get them from China couldn't find them locally so I'm going to fit one of them up on the side here just to latch it in place so I'll unlatch it and I'll make two little angle brackets and just pop rivet them onto the sheet so that they can just be lifted off these uh, these two bolts here so that's what I'll do well that's one job done um, I'll get it back off there. I'll put this latch on the side to uh, get it on and off with but it won't swing out like I thought so uh, I'll have to just lift it off those two bolts on the back but that's okay. I can live with that. I won't be taking it on and off every other day. I've got. The, I've just tried fitting up this plastic strip here. I might uh, put a few drops of glue underneath to keep it on. Put one along the bottom one all around all the edges and I want to give it a paint, paint it green like this so it looks the part. One thing I didn't mention before in the to-do list was uh, I don't really want to put the controls for the for the power feed back up there in that box. So what I want to do is make a little panel that will fit up in here. 
this will slope it out a bit make it run from here out to that point at the bottom there and I'll put the switches and stuff in there for the power feed because I'm not going to pull power from that box either I'll run the 12 volts I need for that motor from my uh, DC power box over there so it's me having to put any, anything more in that box up there well that's not the most elegant looking panel I've ever made but uh, it'll do the job so now I've just got to drill and tap some holes to bolt it on with and uh, it'll do that switch in here maybe a speed controller or, or I might just use the speed controller that's up in the other box up there and just have an on off switch here maybe a light say that the power's on well that was a fun way to start a day uh, went down to the only a wrecking yard that I knew of that I bought the last wiper motor from that I put on the lathe and uh, he told me he doesn't do this stuff anymore it looks like he only does engines and transmissions now but I asked him is there another one and he pointed down the road and told me it was on the other side of the road and uh, I got some vague instructions and the next half an hour I went looking for the place and eventually I found him wanted a lot more for, well he wanted 700 baht for that and he paid 500 for the last one but it, it, uh, it's a runner, it works. I might even get a half a rapid Travis out of this one because that's flat out. I think that's a bit faster than, uh, than the one on laid. So I'll get this all cleaned up and make some brackets for it and we'll turn it into a rapid Travis. Well, we'll turn it into a power feed anyway. Alrighty, I uh, thought I'd show you what I'm doing here rather than just show you the finished product. Uh, this is nothing new. It's there must be half a dozen or more versions of this on YouTube. So anyway, that bearing you could see on the shaft originally, or in earlier video, is now bolted up in the back here. That's the two threads you can see just there. This shaft needs to be cut off a bit. Uh, this I've taken the thread out of that and put a reamer up in it. It needs to be cut in half and I'll either pin it or grub screw it to the shaft. I haven't decided what I'll do yet. Uh, went down the road this morning and bought this deep walled socket and he didn't have a standard one so just I've got the deep wall one I've taken the end off where the square drive is bought it out a little bit and pressed a, uh, a bush in there and then it's pressed in that hard I was going to weld it as well but it's that tight it's not going anywhere and I've drilled it and relieved it put a little tiny bit of taper in there and threaded an M1 which is kind of odd because M125 is a standard M8 uh, and that screws on there I have got to make a plate up for this shit these two holes in here there's a plate for here and this morning I welded the two plates together and I drilled a center hole and these two to make sure they're all lined up and the way this works if you haven't seen one before is it sits on two pins let's, let's say this is not engaged at the moment it sits on two pins and when you want to engage it you just slide it in so you're now engaged and it'll drive and when you finish just pop it back out again so that's how that works but all this needs to be chopped down a bit so it's not sticking out so far anyway that's what I'm up to and uh, I'll get on and finish it well viewers not having a real good run this week uh, it's Thursday I got absolutely nothing done yesterday on Wednesday because I spent half the day at the hospital waiting for my 10 o'clock appointment that I finally got at midday I ordered the pins the 10 mil shaft that, to go in here three days ago still hasn't even been shipped and it's only up in Bangkok slack bastards on it anyway so this morning I've got in and I've made the uh, candle weights for this it's hurting. <laughs> it feels a lot better going down but it was always easy going down but it's definitely a bit easier coming back up but at the moment there's no motor they're adding weight to it I've got the capability of adding a bit more weight on the back should I have to but that definitely feels better than it did uh, another thing that I've done is I've wired up this switch now and the light and uh, these pins ever get here we uh, will this we'll be able to uh, be able to finish this but anyway so I've got this all wired up so that uh, if I go this side it'll move this way if I go this side it'll move this way and I don't know what I was thinking about rapid traverses because this is flat out yep that's no rapid traverse Anyway, that's that, that all done. If you're enjoying this video up to this point, how about giving it a great big thumbs up and uh, consider subscribing if you haven't already. One of my subscribers asked in the last, uh, after the last video how well this uh, washing machine motor would handle a load at low speed. So let's have a look, shall we? 
what I'll do is uh, just fire it up, get it ticking over something really slow. There we go, around 120 RPM. I'm going to load this thing up with my hand. It balked initially, and then the tachometer built into the motor ticked in and, and started to compensate. It's really low speed, it doesn't compensate. You, you've only got about half, but it doesn't stall completely. Let's go a little higher. Higher revs, it, it does a better job. But anyway, so that answers that question. Well, viewers, minor problem. I'm just setting up to uh, run the face mill across this table, and I was spinning it up to speed, had the cover on. Next thing I heard this bang, tinny sort of bang, and I thought, what was that? And all of a sudden I thought, oh, I know what that was. The bloody magnet has come unstuck. I only used a bit of super glue on it. It's flown out and hit the cover, and the cover's aluminium, so it didn't wasn't going to stick to that. But everything around here, pretty much other than that casing on the motor is all steel and I can't find it and the only place it could have gone inside that cover was down and I've looked everywhere and I can't find it anything so I guess it'll show up sooner or later but anyway I'm going to uh to, I'm going to have a crack at doing a little milling a small section of this table so I can bolt the vice to it but we'll be doing it at a guesstimated speed so uh a bit of a here goes nothing I just put some new cutters in this too Tips, that is. I've got to say that looks bloody awful. Um, looks like it's just rubbing on it. Not cutting at all. Um, also, I can feel a bit of vibration up in the in the tower here, so I better check everything's tight and come back to you. Well, it's still not cutting brilliantly, but uh, it's cutting better than it was bouncing around on loose gibs that I hadn't adjusted or tightened up. I'd taken all the screws out of the back uh, the back gibs on the carriage there uh, when I painted it, and I just screwed back in finger tight and hadn't adjusted them. Uh, but I found the magnet was tucked up uh, on the top behind the pulley. And anyway, it's, it would, I can understand why it's come out, it's quite hot. So I might have to glue it in with some epoxy or something rather than super glue, which let's go when it gets hot. But anyway, let's uh, we'll fire this up and have another little go here. Slow it down a bit too. Well, it still feels like it's bouncing around, but uh, I mean, it feels okay. It doesn't look nice, but it feels okay. Uh, anyway, I might investigate some more, and uh, if I can find what it is, I'll fix it and finish doing that. <clears throat> All right, I spent a fair bit of time uh, trying to get a decent cut and finish out of that face mill, and I just can't get a decent finish out of it. So I thought I'd get out the biggest end mill I've got, which is only 10 mil, and uh, give it a few runs with that. And, I've been up here twice or three times with a bit on the edge. So I'll run it down here and we'll have a look see at that. Oh, that was uh, a 10 millimeter carbide, brand new carbide end mill. Power fed at 1400 RPM. And it looks pretty good. I'm not having any luck at all with that uh, with that face mill, but this will take a bit longer. But it will give me what I want—a nice flat area in here to bolt that uh, vice to. Well, that didn't take a lot of finishing. In fact, it didn't take long at all power feeding it. But what it has showed me is that I've got a bit of trimming to do, and by God, is this spindle hot! Uh, it's leaning forward because there's a little ridge on the back edge of all of these, which means that the cut us tilted forward a bit. I did adjust it this way a bit uh, 
when I still had the, the other cutter in there because it was cutting on this edge and not on this edge which suggested it was tilted that way. So I've moved it back a bit uh, and seemed to have gotten rid of that. It cut pretty cleanly going that way. But like I said there's a little ridge on the back edge of every one of those. But anyway so luckily I put those, those tramming bolts in, the, the adjusting bolts down in the bottom of the column because they should help me to adjust that back like that. The company to, uh, to claim they have something in stock and then take three days just to pack it up and send it to you. And, you know, to take four days to arrive. Just ridiculous. Especially when they're only 120 kilometres up the road. Anyway, finally got here so I can get on with uh, finishing this um, power feed. On another note, I decided yesterday after messing around milling this that I need some cutters bigger than 10 mil. So I got online and I very reluctantly paid 900 baht for a 20 mil cutter and it's not cobalt, it's only high speed steel because the price of cobalt one just scared the hell out of me. And then uh, just after I'd, I'd paid for the other one, something popped up and I've discovered this guy up in uh, Ubon Ratsatani which is it's a fair drive from here, it's probably four and a half hour drive from here. But he sells uh, second hand stuff that's been resharpened and jeez I bought I ordered two things off and he's tossed another two or three things in just for good measure free a top bloke but anyway we'll see what the stuff uh, looks like when it arrives here he, he said he'll send it today which that's half a chance I'll actually receive that tomorrow because it'll come down overnight but anyway we'll get on with finishing this thing off alrighty so that's it all done uh, well, I'll give you a bit of a, a an explanation of just what I've done here uh, I don't like to be the same as everyone else. So these two pins, normally guys bolt them in or screw them in, they do something, but these two pins are welded into that plate, into the back of it. Uh, I went one longer one, one shorter one. This bush here is bolted in the back. And this one, this is welded. This pin goes all the way through. Comes out here. Right, now you're probably looking and going, well, what stops it pulling off? Well, I took a simplistic way around it, and I just used the bolt. The bolt goes in here. Put a nut on here. Screw that bolt in there. Where's my Allen key going? Yep, that's completely disengaged there, so we'll uh, lock that nut up. And then we can just pull that in and out as much as we like without it uh, dropping off. So that's it. So when we put it in, into gear, we just go, and away it goes. And then when you're done, pull it off. I'm like a bought one, any better. Well, that just about concludes this uh, week's episode, I would think. Um, come back next week and I'm going to use this in a kind of unconventional way to try and trim in this, this head with because I need something completely flat in all four directions so I'm going to use that and machine up both ends so I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode and thanks for watching bye bye